Yanks and bacon, gonna see what's shaking, cause there ain't no faking here on Yanks and Bacon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yeggs and Bacon. My name is Brandon. And I am Danica. And I actually forgot I wanted mugs. Just little mugs to here in uh, one second. We have water bottles. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Yeggs and Bacon. For those of you who don't know, Yeggs and Bacon was actually uh, part of the original store. Um, it was a podcast that we did uh, talking about a lot of modern pop culture stuff. And. Uh, and um, the comments so coming a, out. Yeah, it was a weekly podcast mm -hmm. that we posted, gosh, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Like usual. Uh, we previewed the new comics for the next day. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about if there was any comics news during the week. And it was definitely a morning show. Um, mm -hmm. So I am very pleased that we're bringing this back. What we're also doing with this now is we're bringing back the podcast because... As much as we love uh, doing the YouTube experience and whatnot, a lot of people have said that they don't have time to be watching and would like something to listen to. So um, every night shortly after uh, this goes out, we're gonna pull the audio from this and our our, uh, our podcast will be back. Yeah. So it's gonna be really cool. Um, as we, as we kind of go along, it's gonna be more of a morning show style format and uh, we're gonna have uh a lot of uh dumb weird fun uh as we do um yeah. one of the main changes from our past check-ins um we <clears throat> will be uh running the comments and uh, a lot of times we'll be showing them on the screen um but we won't be addressing everybody directly until uh viewer uh questions or if something comes up that actually um is pertinent to the the comic that we're talking about mm -hmm. and we're gonna keep all that to the end and then i'm gonna friggin romper room all of you <laughs> yes i'm so excited for romper rooming he's very excited i i uh i told danica the concept and i was uh i was very very extremely proud of myself a little too proud of myself i would say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so what do we want to do first do we want to show them the really really cool art uh, for our exclusive book, or do we want to hold that off for after the comics? Oh, hmm. interesting. Okay, well, I would say um, we're gonna hold off, but only because I just want I just want to stretch it out a little bit. I want you to be feeling anticipation when we reveal the cover. So uh, you might have seen some of it up on our social media, but we've got a little bit more for you. Um, for those of you who don't know, these folks are the Canadian store that will be getting a very exclusive, highly limited, signed mm -hmm. uh, copy of uh, copies of Dracula Motherfucker from Alex DeCampi and Erica Henderson. And we are just super, super excited about all that stuff. It's so great. It's mm -hmm. been such a fun process, uh, just planning and uh, kind of getting our, our weird store cabal set up with other mm -hmm. awesome stores around the world. And just saying, hey, can we nerd out more than we usually do? Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. So that's going to be happening after we talk about comics. Um, again, uh, folks out there, uh, please feel free to say hi. Because if you say yes. hi, I'm going to romp a room you at the end. <laughs> and uh, even if you just have a question, it could be any question. That is... Uh, within reason. Yeah, within reason um, that we can come up with a family-friendly answer for. Uh, keeping in mind that we are going to repeatedly say the words Dracula motherfucker in this family-friendly episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's the title of a book. We're trying. The children need to know. <laughs> the children need to know. Remember, kids. <laughs> oh, no. Don't listen to your comics aunt and uncle. No. Mm -mm. Uh, Dracula motherfucker is going to be cool AF. And uh, as we have said before, kids, AF stands for cool and fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. 
Let's get started with some single issue comics and then we'll go into some uh, graphic novels. Super excited. Hey, have any of you heard of this Al Ewing guy whose uh, Twitter handles and, and Facebooks make me want to keep saying it's Alewing. Oh. Um, it's not Alewing. I'm gonna fix the cat thing, I'll be right okay. back. Okay. Um, uh, one of the cats is stuck, uh, so I'm running the cat and he's at the bottom. Um, we only find them when they're dead is Al Ewing's uh, new creator owned book. He's got uh, Simona DeMeo uh, on as the artist. It is uh, literally a galaxy brain book. Yeah, yeah. actually it is. Uh, so it's about literally finding uh, gods when they're dead and uh, selling off their body parts. It's a very, very interesting thing. If you like any of Al Ewing's stuff, uh, including... Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's going up. Uh, including oh, okay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Immortal Hulk and Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, that's actually a, a weird combo of what's happening here. There's a crossroads. There is, yes. Indeed. I've read it, it's fantastic, and it looks so good. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, next up we have, all right, y'all been waiting for it. And it's happening. Kelly Thompson's Black Widow series. It's supposed to come out April? Uh, yeah, when the movie is going to be out. It's supposed to come out in April with the movie. And then the movie didn't come out. And then the movie didn't come out. And then the movie didn't come out. I'm pretty sure they're planning for it to come out regardless in November. Yeah. So hopefully. Um, anyway. Um, so Kelly Thompson is solid. I have read everything uh, she has done in comics. And they're actually pros, really. Uh, I think she's True, yeah. a fantastic human being, and she's hilarious. And I like her take on pretty much anything. Um, I will read anything she writes. I've kind of spread that onto some file customers that they're like, anytime she's writing a thing, she really put has. in my file. Yeah, yeah it's because they're smart and cultured and awesome. <laughs> uh, if you would like to be smalt, smalt. Would you like to be smalt? Would no. you like to be smalt and cultured? <laughs> no. If you would like to be smart and cultured, uh, read anything by Kelly Thompson, and this week, read Black Widow. It will be a good idea mm -hmm. for your face. Yes. Um, there's a new series of the Sumerian people of the Black Circle. Now, the Sumerian is Conan the Barbarian, uh, so titled because Marvel has the specific rights to Conan uh, right now, but uh, a company called Ablaze is republishing a lot of uh, some of the European stuff. Uh, that is... Um, definitely uh, a lot more European in sensibility and art style and everything. These are amazing. They also have the full text of the Conan stories in the back. Um, so if Conan is your deal, this is a good deal for y'all. <laughs> oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. next up, <gasps> more Doctor Who. Who would have thunk that I would introduce this? It's shocking, I know. Doctor Who, I've never heard of this. Doctor Who. Uh, yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> it is time for Doctor Who. <laughs> ba -doo, ba -doo. <laughs> Those are the words to the Doctor Who song, yeah. as anybody who has watched the show knows. It's canon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this is a big old story. It's, it's a two-parter, so that's why each issue is big. Um, and it is about, well, let's see here. It's about your guy. Eight, ten, nine, what? What's going on here? All these three doctors, what are they doing? Who is Having the Time Lord Victorious? I don't know. I mean, ten's the one with the big big collar, so I'm going to go with him. Yeah, and he's, and he's got murder face. Yeah, he definitely has murder face. He's got I'm the decider face. <laughs> exactly. So this is going to be my personal first read tonight because I am super psyched and I love Doctor Who comics. And it's also written by Jodie Hauser, who has been solid in Doctor Who and everything else she's written for the last few years and probably before that. But that's when I personally discovered her. Not claiming that I discovered her. I personally discovered her for my person. She discovered her. I discovered Jodie Hauser. It's canon. 
Oh, God, she's going to email me. It's canon. She's going to yell at me. I'm sure she has layers. Grand Ole Kentucky. Okay, yeah. so I was listening to a podcast with Axel Alonzo, who is the editor-in-chief mm -hmm. of uh, Upshot. Um, and he was talking about a whole bunch of the books. This one is definitely sort of like uh, a down-home uh, crime book uh, focused, my friends, on a weed farm. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's good crime. Um, they do a lot of uh, great crime books, and I'm, I'm really excited uh, to kind of mm -hmm. dig into that some more because Tommy Lee Edwards is doing the art, and Tommy Lee Edwards just kind of pops in and out of comics every now and then and does astounding work and then just sort of like swans away. Mm -hmm. Like the beautiful swan he is. I love that. Mm -hmm. I like swans. Yeah. I swans mean, do not like me. They're kind of dicks. Though. Have you ever fought a swan? And one? Yeah. No. You never. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> Danica LeBlanc, swan fighter. Would read that comic. Uh, yeah, it'd be amazing. Would watch that show. Wait. Uh, okay, neck tattoos. So S W A N, but you got to shorten fighter. So just like no uh, vowels, I think. So like F G H T. Oh no, you need that R. That's though. just swan fight. So <laughs> I mean, swan fight would be amazing. Swan fight. Okay, uh, I'm not getting knuckle tattoos because that sounds like a lot of pain. But if I did swan fight, mine is going to be snug life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, the team from Maneater has a new comic series out called Spy Island. It is literally about an island full of spies. Spy Island. So it's a really good title. It's kind of like Billionaire Island, except Billionaire Island all has billionaires. Yes. Um, and so, of course, spies are trying to spy on each other and do mysterious things to each other. And there's like... Sexy sex times, because spies. Spies. Uh, and also, it's in the Bermuda Triangle. Did I mention that? I didn't. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. <laughs> All right, next up. Uh, and folks, again, please feel free. <laughs> Did you do that? I didn't do the bottom one. Uh, <laughs> please feel free, uh, again, to ask any questions, any questions at all uh, for our viewer question period. You can uh, yeah. ask them at any time, because... Uh, uh, we're just gonna keep track of them and and do a thing later. And if there's no questions, there's no questions. That's chill as well. But it can literally be anything. All right. Next up. Next up. A couple things very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the Orville's back in comics. If you have been missing the show, and I believe uh, its final season is coming out soonish. Wow. Um, there's uh, uh, there's some more for you right now. Um, so. Uh, get on that and for those of you who have been waiting since i believe december for uh the promised uh return of marvel zombies after the one shot that came out then and said hey it's coming back uh, was also gonna come back in april i believe does anyone really remember december though i uh remember remember the ides of december no that's exactly <laughs> that is that's an exact quote yes from uh, v for Vengeance. From Plato. From Plato's V for Vengeance. <laughs> oh, no. Such a we're gonna wonderful get, book. We're going to get emails. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Marvel Zombies uh, are back. Uh, the writer of this I really, really enjoy, um, but I can never remember his name because there's three of them, and that's a lot of names. Um, and That's true. Sorry. Just because uh, Taz is on top of... That is actually an Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, lyric. Remember September. But Do you remember... <laughs> December? No, it's September. <laughs> anyway. I'm pretty sure it's December. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure it's December. Anyway. Okay. So let's just... We'll, we'll fight about Earth, Wind, and Fire lyrics later. How about that? <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, September, November, and December happen to rhyme. So if anybody's writing a song, I uh, just threw you some easy ones. It's Philip Kennedy Johnson is the writer, by the way. Mm -hmm. And the art in this one is by Leonard Kirk. All talented people. Very talented mm -hmm. people. All right. Next up are actually a couple I've read already. Yeah, this one. I'm actually getting ahead of reading my PDFs. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> 
Uh, this is a new uh, Zach Thompson vehicle. I don't know what cool people call things. Um, it's called Lonely beep Receiver. Beeps. It's a beep beep. Um, and it is about uh, a woman who is paired with uh, a kind of an AI. So uh, she's... <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. Return to whenever. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm getting distracted. I'm getting the distracted. Thing. I'm doing the thing that we said we didn't, we wouldn't, well, you said it, you wouldn't want to do. Or you, yeah, because we got podcasting to go out. Yeah, what? I'm good at this. Oh, there'll be growing pains. that will happen. Okay, cool. Um, so, a uh, woman hooks up with this AI. Uh, it's supposed to be this perfect person for you, and they're supposed to stay with you forever. And then her wife ends up leaving her. And that's really tragic, because this is not supposed to happen. So it's all about uh, what's going on there. How can she fix it? Can she fix it? Very, very good. Yeah, Zach Thompson's been on a bit of a tear lately. Yeah. Uh, doing some real good stuff for Aftershock. Mm. Oh, yeah. He also wrote uh, The Dregs. So if anybody Ooh. remembers that. that oh, was... He was the co-writer of The Dregs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, co-writer. Okay. I'll, well, I'm just, I just quickly went into his... Um, his bio. The Dregs is wonderful and uh, has only gotten more relevant. It's about how um, the city of Vancouver have been uh, using homeless people as meat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a bit of a crime noir about that. Yeah. The Dregs, folks. Happy reading for these modern times. Yeah, it's not a fun read, but it's a good read. All right, next up is a book called Inkblot. Now, you're like, wait a second. That seems nondescript, but wait, there's a cat on the cover. There's a cat on the cover. Suddenly, my interest has peaked. Also, the back cover has an inkblot cat face. Uh, I believe that's my mother. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so, inkblot is about a, it's a fantasy about a family. And uh, the main character is kind of their librarian. She records all kinds of information. Um, she basically spends her life writing. However, she accidentally invents, uh, kind of uh, creates rather, uh, a time and space traveling cat who just goes around and hex up time and space. So I'm I'm confused. Are you saying that you, en you enjoy this book? Danica LeBlanc, mm -hmm. a noted Doctor Who, a uh, fan and uh, cat aficionado, cat connoisseur. This is literally a Venn diagram of everything I like. <laughs> so I don't know if the the writers have been like following me around or they're walking watching uh, through the FBI webcam, but uh, this is really good. And uh, I was lucky enough to preview uh, the first few issues, so. Yay, thank you for that. Uh, it continues to be good. It's very good. Uh, her family is large. Her siblings are kind of dill holes, but that is the point. Shout out to Alan at the FBI. I hope your family's doing well and that you're keeping you're keeping okay and stop being a cop. Seriously. Stop being a cop. Yeah. Uh... Uh, very excited for the second uh, printing cover of Ice Cream Man number 20. It is a Dr. Uh, Seuss uh, pastiche. It is horrifying and the cover itself is uh, a take on all oh, the places you will go mm -hmm. uh, noted for uh, sending young children off into the cold cold world with some fun fun words <laughs> oh my gosh all right oh oh yeah and coffin bound has returned uh, for those of you who don't know about Coffin Bound, it's this brilliant kind of modern uh, take on a, a very Sandman-esque style story. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, extremely wild. Um, it's got like some wild mythology, wild imagery, including like uh, a birdcage person, astronaut stuff, um, uh, a lady in a car. Um, <laughs> that sounds extremely supernatural. Right? Um, <laughs> it's It's super hard to explain. I love it dearly. Um, it's it's completely bonkers. If you love that feeling of like old '90s vertigo, and you mm -hmm. want a pitch pitch perfect mm -hmm. uh, uh, reimagining of that, um, definitely check it out. 
I'm mentioning this specifically because we have some trades in the store and uh, if it is of interest to you, you will get with the trade purchase. Oh, what will you get, Brandon? We were sent these beautiful posters <gasps> that I forgot to bring home. Oh no! Um, right. Uh, was it possibly because I moved them? Maybe. It's probably that. Um, but uh, we're we're gonna be giving a few of those away. Um, mm -hmm. We will take some pictures of them and put them on our social media and let people know. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to try out the trade, you're gonna get a little treat. And by little, I mean it's pretty freaking big. big. It's not little. It's honking. It's so cool. Yeah. This this beautiful box showed up from what, like Greece? Yep. Yeah. Um, in the mail, and I was like, "What? What is this?" Because I don't expect things from Greece. Can you go get? Yep. I'll be right uh, back. Max, because yeah, cats are happening. Um. And I was just like, okay, I don't know what this is, but this is probably something really neat. And then I opened it and I gasped. I audibly gasped because it's so beautiful. It's and super I don't gorgeous. Know, it's ridiculous. I don't know what we did to deserve this nice thing, but I'm very, very, very thankful. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, last but not least, single issue. Cats. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> All right. I'll give you this cover. We have... Tom Taylor's Hellblazer. Three words I like putting together. You might know Tom Taylor from such things as, as Deceased, number three, which is out this week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, being a genuine great human being. Um, his Suicide Squad, also great. Don't push that book off the table. Um, oh, that would have been heavy. And, and uh, yeah, just being a genuine uh, great human being. He actually, mm -hmm. remember when we were broken into? Yes, a few years back, if you have been shopping with us for only a bit, uh, we were unfortunately broken into. It was a random event. Um, thankfully, the smallest glass was broken, so it didn't cost as much as we need. Whew, we were worried. Um, however, Tom... Mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, he gave us m enough money to cover four si or no, uh, ten single issues. Uh, oh and yeah and um told us to just give away 10 single issues to the next customers who came in through the door mm -hmm. um brilliant from someone like living in australia has no reason to to be kind yeah. uh to us a uh, uh, small fledgling fledging fledgling 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 store <laughs> anyway <laughs> um it's gonna be uh beautiful uh in the back it says uh, what the hell's going on with a nation tearing itself apart and the irredeemable 1% falling from the sky? Will John Constantine lift a finger? And if so, which finger? <laughs> Chaotic bisexual John Constantine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I super, super cannot wait to <laughs> read this. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm also a very, not usually a cover person, but both covers are just works of art. Mm -hmm, just absolutely. beautiful works of art. And uh, the variant has only spot varnish on the logo, but I mean, it's a Bermejo who is just, this should be in a museum. And the main cover has spot just glass. swank spot varnish everywhere it needs to go. And I love it. And uh, the artist Derek Robertson actually uh, posted a video to, I believe, his Twitter, mm. where he reflected this with some flames, mm. and it looked actually pretty rad. So, yeah, that cool. All right, I'm moving on. I've got some books. We got some books. Mm, excuse me. Na 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 na. We got some books. Oh no. We got some books. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, if you're hearing jingling, that's because I forgot to put all the cats away. Uh, cat toys away, rather. The cats, I can't put them away. They'll scream. Uh, I forgot to put the cat toys away, and uh, Max is currently playing uh, with what we call Squid Belly. Squid Belly. Uh, which is a little blue squid with a bell in it. Uh, before we move on from Hellblazer, Andrew is saying the best. Mm. it's the best thing Robertson's drawn since Transmit 1 to 3. Mm. Um, high, high praise. Transmit 1. One to three is is really really peak Robertson. Yeah, I like it. All right, okay. 
So, uh, did you want to do this one? Because I definitely want to do the second one. Um, or should we just? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this one's new to us, um, and uh, it's uh, Speak the Graphic Novel. So it's the graphic novel adaptation of Laura Hulse Anderson's book, and all art is by Emily Carroll. You might know her from Through the Woods. Mm -hmm. And Spooking Up Your Dreams. Spooking Up Your Dreams. She is a Canadian. I actually did not know that part. Oh, yeah, it's in her bio in the back. I mean, I kind of vaguely knew it, but this, this confirms it. Mm -hmm. um, so the story itself, speak up for yourself. Uh, we want to know what you have to say. From the first moment of her freshman year at Meriwether High, Melinda knows that this is a big fat lie, part of the nonsense of high school. She is friendless, an outcast, because of something that happened over the summer. Now no one will talk to her, let alone listen. So what's the point of talking? Through her work on an art project, Melinda is finally able to face what uh, really happened that night, but before she can make peace with the ghost of her past, she has to confront the reality of the present and stop someone who still wishes to do her harm. Only words can save her. She can't stay silent. Not anymore. Yeah. Anyway, it looks beautiful. I'll dig into it a bit uh, tonight and see what I can tell you. All right. Next up is one I've actually been waiting for for a while. Um, it was just brilliant to me uh, when the singles were coming out. Uh, probably like a, a year? A year or two ago. A year or two? It's been a while. Yes. So this is called Breathless. And the main character is a cryptozoologist who discovers in her research uh, that um, one of the creatures she's... Uh, basically doing auto an autopsy on can uh solve asthma now because of that the pharmaceutical folks are now chasing her for this information and basically murdering everything everybody around her trying to get that yeah but okay respiratory comics so hot right now thank you taz um admittedly <laughs> the timing is probably not great um or oh, right. the timing is perfect. Like this has only gotten more relevant. That is fair. Yeah. That is fair. Um, they always had like pay to live on the uh, on the back, which is whew, oh, relevant. Um, and let's see. Oh yeah, and her assistant is a morally ambiguous succubus. <laughs> She's delightful. <laughs> It's a it's an amazing book. Um, as mm -hmm. The people at Black Mask, this is kind of the thing they do. All of their stuff is saying something, and it's really important to kind of like get that uh, kind of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, quite honestly, yeah, that's it's yeah. something you're probably interested in, folks. It's a good read if you want a nice short uh, one volume story. Four issues, one and done, my friends. Not everybody wants a long a long run. But I love having these one volumes to recommend and just say, hey, you want a good story that's just going to come out and slap you in the face and go, you're welcome. Absolutely. Um, Taz is kind of killing it with the comments right now. And also <laughs> saying, uh, LOL, unlike those moral high ground suck you by. <laughs> that's right. Uh, love it. Yeah. No, she's fun. I got to read this again. It was so good. Um, her assistant was just kind of dopey. She tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. We have next up the Inkberg Enigma. Uh, haven't you always thought there's something weird about this town? Uh, Mira and Zia live in Aurora, a fishing town nestled in the shadow of a mysterious castle. Mira lives in a world of books. Mm. Zia is never without her camera. The day they meet, they stumble upon a secret. With Zaya determined to discover more, a reluctant Miro is pulled into a real life adventure. Um, this book looks amazing. It's by uh, Jonathan King and it's uh, published by Gecko Press. Um, it just, it really looks kind of like a, a modern Goonies-ish type of thing, exploring a small town, probably on your like summer vacation type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, there seems to be some cryptid stuff happening. It's kind of our thing. Yeah. 
And honestly, you were flipping the pages and it smells good too. Oh. Uh, we are giant book nerds. That good so book smell? I love that book, mm -hmm. book smell. Uh, I'm going to do the last two because I've actually read both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very passionate about, uh, well, both of them, but definitely the last one. And we can show you the interiors. <laughs> All right, so first up is an anthology called Be Gay, Do Comics. And it is um, from uh, the people who run the NIP. So there is a lot of that. Um, it's literally, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's see here, uh, is filled with dozens of comics about LGBTQIA plus experiences, ranging from personal stories to queer history to cutting satire about pronoun panic and brands desperate to co-opt pride. It's great. I mean, it is funny and it is sad and it is sweet and it is hopeful. I love it. Like it's just all these different points of view and different ways that people grew up and kind of getting that experience out there. That bores and all the people at the Nib are remarkable. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, highly recommend everybody check out what the Nib's doing because um, they're, they're saying important things for these these modern times. And these unprecedented times. We haven't mm. heard that enough. <laughs> I joke. All right. This one, oh, I'm so excited. This one's called Bear. And it's about a uh, seeing, um, not seeing eye dog. It's a guide dog. He's a guide dog. They actually say the proper name in the book. So I think I'm getting it wrong, unfortunately. But... Um, not that that doesn't matter. Yeah. However. Oh, yeah. Oh, and for the record, we say guide dogs. Seeing eyes. Ah, perfect. Okay. So I guide dogs. I did get it right. So this is about a dog called Bear who uh, gets kind of uh, trapped. Um, sorry. So he's a, see he's a guide dog. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that, uh, to start the story, is that he actually goes blind as well. Uh, and he's really concerned about how he can't fulfill his role for his human um, because they are best friends and he's obviously his, his eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes through, uh, he goes on adventures. Um, minor spoiler, he does actually meet a bear and they are friends, which is great. Um, he meets animals. They have these beautiful, I'll show you some art here. So the audio folks won't be able to see that art, but no. we are going to link to uh, some a place where you will be able to see some of the art in our notes. Whenever we show uh, interior art, we're going to uh, try and match that with the audio experience when you look at the notes. Yes. And it's very, very cool because when Bear is blind, uh, they are, there we go. They show him in familiar territories that he is imagining because that's what he knows. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of kind of black panels with outlines of rooms he knows, but that's not where he is. So I thought it was very, very, very genius and very sweet. And it just made me happy cry. Um, it's a super, super gorgeous book. Um, mm -hmm. I do wish the audio folks could see it. And please do uh, look at our, our audio notes and seek it out. Bear is brilliant. By Ben Queen and Joe Todd Stanton. And if you're hearing a rustling, that's because Joy is in the recycling. And I can't stop it. Cats. Cats. We love them. Whoa. And she's gone. All right, folks. Uh, we've gotten to uh, the point in the broadcast where we get to talk about our pretty, pretty exclusive cover for Dracula Motherfucker. Um, mm. Mother Hecker. I've said it enough. Yeah, no, we'll just have to put a swearing uh, a caption on this or yeah, something. Yeah, it's going to have cussing. There's going to be cussing. <laughs> All right. We are so excited um, because we kind of got to see this happen like we got the um, uh the preliminary kind of sketches and, and uh, even then i was like yes about this yeah so we've got some uh exclusive cover art from yuko i'm so sorry 
I thought, oh no. Oh, Yuko Shimizu. Shimizu, I'm sorry. My brain always does that. It just, it goes away. Um, <laughs> we've only been talking about her for like a solid month. It's fine, oh, no. whatever. I'm bad um, at names. And uh, we can finally kind of show you the full art. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been out on our social media uh, for a little bit, but hey, check that out. Look at that, it's so pretty. Um, Look at those colors. <sighs> those colors are brilliant. Hey. Um, what? Whoa, neat, on my face. On your face. That's so rude. Hey, <laughs> now, is that a deer? Um, I believe it is some kind of deer, yeah. Why do you keep putting stuff on my face? I like, I like adding things. Also, um, <laughs> not only are we having this exclusive cover for this book, uh, which we're just, we're super excited for. Um, it's it's a, just a, a, a brilliant take on Dracula, horror elements, mm -hmm. um, psychedelia, the 70s, um, kind of like that. Uh, dark inky uh, uh, noir style stuff, but not noir specifically because there's like psychedelia colors. Really, really mm -hmm. cool. Um, there's also going to be a signed art print uh, that Alex DeCampi is signing and Erica Henderson is drawing and signing and it's gonna look like this. Um, so brilliant, so brilliant. Um, I really like how uh, did you just put a tree on your own face? I just put a tree on my own face. You just put a tree on your own face. I'm hiding. Okay, well, this is just a whole mess. And if you're an audio listener, you're probably pretty lucky right now that you don't have to see this. Yeah, uh, uh, we will be linking to the art uh, in the uh, in the audio notes. Um, very, very sorry to the audio folks. Uh, <laughs> but you do have to see this. Um, Dracula Motherfucker is gonna be amazing. It's out October 7th. Yes. Uh, another thing that we want to share, mm -hmm. uh, because we can kind of we can kind of hint at this, kind of hint share. Um, so Ryan North uh, is doing an adaptation of, um, <laughs> is, is doing an adaptation of um, uh, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. And as part of uh, this Bastard Editions, uh, uh, Bastard Title Editions group, yep. um, we will also be getting uh, some art prints for that signed by Ryan North with art from Erica Henderson. We saw the art today. It is super, super remarkable. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna want to see Erica Henderson drawing Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah, it's, she's, I mean, I, she's outdone herself. Uh, the the strides she's made in the last couple of years, I mean, she was already very talented and her art is just, just sharpened. And I'm going to move that pasta bag because the cats keep going The cats for really it. like the pasta bag. Uh, one time we came home and uh, there was just pasta all over the floor, just dry pasta all over the floor. Um, they they tend to love it. I don't know why. So that's always been fun. All right. So um, going through the comments, it doesn't look like we have any uh, any questions. Um, so yeah. we're not going to do questions. But what it does mean, mm. I'm super excited for this. Oh boy! It's magic mirror time, baby. We're romper rooming this. Oh, okay. Get ready. So thank you, everybody. Uh, who is here live? I'm gonna romp a room if you don't mind scrolling. I will because uh, I can't remember everybody. I've got the magic mirror right here. Okay. Uh, which is legitimate magic mirror for everybody uh, in our audio. Definitely holding that up, and uh, it's uh, real and true mm -hmm. and something that exists. All right. So um, I'm looking out there, and I'm looking to see all of our wonderful people who are who are watching this evening. Thank you once again. Uh, I see Michelle. I see Sean. I see Taz, I see Paul, I see a lot of Taz, <laughs> I ah. see Lori, I see Eric, I see Andrew, I see Taz. <laughs> we, we definitely saw a lot of Taz. Um, and uh, we see Mike. Um, thank you all for watching. And, uh, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. I see Kate. Oh. The magic mirror's oh. back. It told me there's somebody else. Oh. Uh, Kate's here too. Oh, hi, Kate. 
We don't know, Andrew. Andrew asks, what the hell are you doing? Which is a very valid question. And the answer is, we don't know. Andrew, when when you were a youth. Oh. <laughs> uh, back in, back in uh, the younger years, I'm holding up my arm as though I have a watch on it. I do not. Um, did you ever see the romper room? Uh, there was a giant bee in the romper room called Doobie. Um, oh no, really? Oh yeah. Oh, they did not think that one through. Oh, they probably did. Oh, uh -huh. um, the romper room had a whole bunch of childrens in it. Uh, and those, uh, uh, kiddos would, uh, partake in activities with a giant bee. And then at the end, uh, the host would hold up a magic mirror, a viewing glass mirror, mm. and uh, that lady looked out at the audience and saw a whole bunch of children and be like, oh, I see. And uh, they never saw Brandon, and I'm pretty sure they never saw a Danica. They never would, no one ever did. When those uh, racks at drugstores had like the combs and the, the toothbrushes, there was never a Danica. Never a Danica. Mm -mm. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm bringing that grand tradition uh, back, that con super confusing grand tradition with a legitimate magic mirror that I was holding. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, ending the episode, but just sort of thanking everybody for watching. Um, yeah. And uh, and I like it. And uh, yes, Andrew, I'm pretty sure that you would have remembered a, a bee called Doobie. Um, Romper Room, my friends, uh, probably on a YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I, I never watched it myself. So he's he's alone in this one, but I think it's sweet. So. Every afternoon. Aww. Aww. Thanks, Andrew. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Andrew says, I see you. All caps, Danica LeBlanc. <laughs> and then goes, whoops, creepy. Whoops. Um, <laughs> on, on that note, we're actually going to call it a night. Thank you all for watching. Um, it's been a wonderful uh, first attempt at this new uh, podcast yes. slash uh, YouTube show hybrid. And uh, we're going to see how that works. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for understanding that we have cats and you cannot stop them. Uh, they can't and be stopped. They can't be stopped. Uh, heck knows we've tried. Heck and thanks. Just heck and thanks. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's for you. That's for you, Kate. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, Carl, we'll get to... Uh, to that in the comments um, but for now we are going to say adieu goodbye and uh, thank you uh, for watching and now for the awkward time where we click these buttons and it just does not end properly and we just kind of stare at the camera and just wait until wait until this stops anytime now <laughs>